Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our order of service is found on page 203. Please mark it. Our first hymn is hymn 693. Let us sing. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore we are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, Ye in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins, and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The intro it is found printed in your bulletin insert. We speak the words responsibly. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. 
Consider and answer me, O Lord of my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, not one is missing. 
Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. We turn to Psalm 147, and we read the words of Psalm 147 responsibly. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beast their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise our God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He makes peace in your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters four crops like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and just decrees to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his just decrees. Praise the Lord. Glory, Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this on my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, 
that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I, by my means, might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Ye immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her. And she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. We sing hymn 398. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you not known? Have you not heard? This is the rhetorical questions that Isaiah the prophet will ask the hearer. Don't you know these things already? Haven't you heard these things already? We should have, as the people of God. The people of God gather to know God. The people of God gather to hear God. The people of God gather to see Jesus, to behold their God, the creator of all things, the everlasting God, who comes to restore his creation. 
Now, these words, again, are heard by the people of God over and over so that we would know for certain and sure who God is and what he promises to do. And all of that is fulfilled in his son, Jesus. Now, like usual, we go back to the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. This is this preaching that Isaiah gives to the people of God prior to even going off into exile. They'll be in captivity for a whole generation, 70 years, waiting in anticipation, saying, how long, O Lord, how long are we going to be oppressed in a foreign land and not back in the land of promise? How long, O Lord? So again, Isaiah will ask, have you not known, have you not heard this word before? I give it to you yet again. That our God, Yahweh, is the everlasting God. And he does not grow weary or faint. Now the young youth, the one who seems to have all the strength, even the young youth who seems to be so energetic, the young youth will faint and grow weary. But not our God. And in particular, Isaiah says, and not the ones who hear this word, who know this word, but the one who waits on Yahweh. That one, the one who waits, will be renewed in strength. Those ones, they will mount up with wings of an eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now these words right here, understand with me, these are vitally important words in our day right now. I mean, we're asking the question, how long? (laughs) How long is this pandemic going to go? How long are these rules and regulations and these mask mandates going to continue? Where is God here? Does he not know what's going on here on earth? And so Isaiah assures the people of God to hear his word and to know. Have you not known? Have you not heard these things that have been told from the beginning? The preaching of God's word is what sustains us in these days. The one who waits upon Yahweh will be renewed in strength. I mean, we even understand this transition of being mounting up with wings like eagle. I mean, you take off in the flight, and then after a while, it's like, how much longer? Well, they will run and not grow weary. And so you run for a while, and you say, how much longer are we going to keep running? And he ends on this note and says, they will walk and not faint. So that you slow down the pace and you continue to move forward, however slow that may be. Baby steps. But continuing to hear the word. Continuing to know that your Savior cares. In fact, when you look at this text itself, this whole understanding of those who wait. (laughs) It's the people in exile, a whole generation, they were waiting for the government to alleviate all the extra tyrannical rules and regulations. Being freed once again and from captivity to go back to the land of promise. That was just one generation. I mean, really, in perspective, that's not that long. In fact, this whole preaching of waiting for Yahweh goes all the way back to Jacob. That's what Jacob was doing on his deathbed. Remember the promise to Adam and Eve, as soon as they sinned, that the seed would crush the serpent's head and they would be delivered, freed from the slavery to the fear of death. But then they waited. Noah, Abraham. Isaac, and even Jacob on his own deathbed is still waiting for the fulfillment of this. And so on his deathbed, he prays and he says, To you, O Yahweh, I wait for your salvation. 
that this is the prayer of Jacob on his deathbed as he is faint and growing weary and his life is coming to an end before his eyes and his own sons see it. But they hear that word and they retain it because they've known and they've heard and they continue to rejoice in this message, to wait for Yahweh's salvation. This is what they've been doing throughout the whole days of the Old Testament, waiting for the Messiah to come in the preaching of the word. So in the days of Isaiah, they're still waiting. And Isaiah gives them these words in chapter 40 so that even when they go into exile for 70 years and they still wait, they can be assured that this word is going to give them strength. Now notice that it's in that chapter 40 of Isaiah where we see the preacher preaching in the wilderness. So we note where he's preaching. And what's the message of Isaiah 40? Behold your God. That's the message. Behold your God. Set your eyes on the God who is the creator who entered into creation to dwell among us so that through the incarnation he would restore us and bring us back to him and to life. And so it's in Isaiah chapter 40 where you have the preacher preaching in the wilderness. Later on it's in Isaiah chapter 61 where Jesus says he's been anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach liberty to the captives. This is what we see in Mark's gospel, where all of these things are just being unfolded before our eyes. Mark's gospel in chapter 1 opens up with the preaching of the voice in the wilderness. That's where John the baptizer is preaching this, wait for the Lord in his timing, for his salvation. And so it's the preaching of John the baptizer. And then what happens to John? He is imprisoned by the earthly government, taken into captivity. And he hands the baton over to Jesus, and Jesus continues to preach. All of this takes place so quickly in chapter 1 of Mark. No wonder why Mark continually says, and immediately, and immediately, and immediately, Jesus is in the synagogue. Immediately, Jesus is in the synagogue, and what's he doing? He's preaching. We heard this last week. He's preaching the kingdom. He's preaching in Galilee. Repent. Believe the gospel. It is through the proclamation of that word that the Holy Spirit is given to work repentance in our hearts and to work faith to sustain us. And so Jesus immediately preaches in the synagogue. And remember last week, the man possessed by the demon, Jesus silences him. That's the key to the preaching. It silences the doctrine of demons or the doctrines of the devils. A false teaching. False teaching that was even going on in the synagogues where God's word was to be heard. But in the text, it immediately goes from the synagogue in Capernaum to the house of Simon, Peter, and Andrew. Why? Because the mother-in-law of Simon, Peter, is sick. Now again, we come back to the reality of living in a broken world where things break. Bones, of course, break. Bodies break. Bodies become sick. There's diseases. There's viruses. There's even the COVID. But it's the mother-in-law of Simon Peter who has a fever. And notice what Jesus does. The one who is the incarnate word, he reaches out and touches, grabs her hand, and raises her up. Showing to us a picture, just a glimpse of what Jesus came to do to restore creation. The problems we have in our bodies that are falling apart will all be fixed in the resurrection of the body on the last day. When we are raised from the dead because of the body of Jesus. 
So Jesus, he reaches out and he touches her with her hand, with his hand, and he raises her up. And then immediately, what does she do? She begins serving Jesus. <laughs> this is immediately. Because she's being restored to health again. Her body is now fixed so that now she can be of service to others, benefiting those in the vocation for which she's been placed. And so it's there where Jesus does this. He heals the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. And then immediately the word, of course, is heard throughout the region, and people are bringing all kinds of sick, all kinds of people who are weak in their bodies, and also those who are being possessed or oppressed by demons. Because this is what Jesus is coming to do, right? But what is fascinating is that Jesus does not start some kind of a Pentecostal big tent revival where all they're doing is casting out demons. Jesus does not start just some kind of a humanitarian effort to help those who have fevers. Instead, Jesus leaves the house and goes back into the wilderness to pray. A desolate place. And it's where the apostles find him and say, hey, everybody's looking for you. And Jesus doesn't say, oh yeah, we need to go start the big tent revival. We need to go start the social gospel movement. Instead, Jesus says very clearly, we must go on to the next towns in the plural. Because I came to preach. I came to preach the good news, to preach and proclaim liberty to the captives, that it is in the person and work of Jesus that we are renewed and strengthened. It is in hearing this word that we mount up with wings of eagles, that we begin to run and not grow weary. But then we begin to walk <laughs> and not faint. It's that word that's heard that we would put our hope and wait in him. Not looking for hope in this life, whether it be uh, the eradication of all false doctrine or the casting out of all demons or the healing of all the sick. But setting our eyes on Jesus who died for our sin and rose again. Looking to the last day when we will rise again in our bodies and newness of life. And then we need not mount up with wings like eagles. We need not run and not grow weary. We need not walk and faint. For we will be with the everlasting God for everlasting and everlasting. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise and we pray for all people according to their needs and especially those who are children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you are the one who has established your church on earth by sending forth your Son so that we could hear his voice, rejoice in the goodness that he comes to bring, bringing to us salvation, the forgiveness of sins and life. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless your church on earth, purchased by the blood of Jesus that those who preach the word may preach it in purity, that those who hear would wait on you and your salvation. Bless our beloved Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and our synodical president, Matthew, and our district president, Roger. Bless our missionaries that have been sent to the ends of the earth, that they may bring your light where there is darkness. 
Bless us in this community that we may be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O merciful Father in heaven, from you comes all rule and authority over the nations of the world for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well. Graciously regard your servants, those who make, administer, and judge the laws of this nation, and look in mercy upon all the rulers of the earth. Grant that all who receive the sword as your servants may bear it according to your command. Enlighten and defend them, and grant them wisdom and understanding that under their peaceable governance, your people may be guarded and directed in righteousness, quietness, and unity. Protect and prolong their lives that we with them may show forth the praise of your name. Give to them, O Lord, a desire to rejoice in the gift of life and give them the heart to defend the unborn. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Mr. Lord, you are the great physician of both body and soul. You are the one who comes to restore us, setting our eyes on your Son, who is the resurrection and the life, and giving us the hope of the life to come in the resurrection of the body. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bless the medical researchers, our doctors and nurses and hospital staff, as they take care of patients, especially in this day of this pandemic. Use this as an opportunity, O oh Lord, for those who have been infected and those who care for them, to set their eyes upon your Son, knowing that he is the one we wait for. Lord, in your mercy. Most of the Lord, we ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior, who stands as our High Priest, living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We sing the final stanza of hymn 399 as our doxology. 